Hello and welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we've got big news from all the major manufacturers about new machines coming out. So we've got details about the new Bamboo Lab A1. If you want to check out my speculation video about that one, click the link up here. But I'm also going to be telling you about a new offering from Creality. So this is going to be the Ender 3 V3, which is coming soon, according to this announcement, on September 14th. So I guess they're trying to beat Bamboo Lab to the punch by coming out with a printer before them, and we'll see how that works out. So this printer appears to be a bed slinger design. You can tell because it's got the upright pillars on the left and right side, and then the cross gantry. And that's a good choice for a printer, especially when you're calling it an Ender 3. I mean, Ender 3s, I think they just have to be bed slingers. Now, information about this printer is pretty sparse, other than that we know it's coming out on September 14th, and it's going to be an Ender 3 style printer. So when you say Ender 3, that usually means a 220 by 220 build volume. So, you know, it's probably going to use a bed about this size. Based on the pictures that we've seen of it, we know it's got a print head that looks remarkably similar to what you find on the Creality K1 and K1 Max. And it's going to be in the Ender 3 V3 lineup. So what do we know about this machine and what can we expect? They tried to darken and hide a lot of details about this machine. And it's really difficult to see what's going on here. But fortunately, fellow YouTuber and Twitter user, Alan Mandic from uh, Mandic Really, he was able to find some extra hints about this machine by boosting the brightness. I mean, that's got to be the easiest way to figure out hidden information. Just turn the brightness up. There's some pretty crazy stuff here that's a major departure from other Ender 3 designs. So let's go over what we can see from this image. The external frame, it appears to be aluminum extrusion. However, there's no T-slot in it. It looks like it's just a much cleaner design that way. And we've got our steel rods running from left to right. So it's going to be running on steel rods just like our Creality K1 printers. Also, the print head here looks a lot like the Creality K1's print head. So let's just take a closer look at this. Yeah, that looks the same. So, you know, you've got a print head that kind of looks like this with this large intake that's capable of moving a ton of air. So we can expect excellent part cooling from this design. We've also got an all metal hot end that's using a ceramic heater element. So overall, a very modern and full featured design. It doesn't look like there's any room on this print head for a CR touch probe. So I'm assuming they're going to be using the same bed leveling system that is being employed on the Creality K1 which is three load cells underneath the base of the printer where it's able to detect the nozzle touching the bed all over and build up a bed leveling mesh that way. I really like that design setup and it's something that I think was really pioneered by the Bamboo Lab P1P and P1S and X1C and it's something that Creality has adopted because, you know, it's just a really good idea. There's a slight possibility that the load cells will be located on the print head itself, just like Creality did with the CR6. I don't know, there was like this bed slinger they came out with a while ago. They did a Kickstarter, but it wasn't really ever a popular printer. But there's something really interesting going on here, and it's something that uh, Alan points out here, is this might be a Core XZ printer. So what is a Core XZ printer? I've talked about Core XZ printers before, and I think they're kind of silly. Um, I don't really see the point of them because one of the great advantages of using a bed slinger is that it's really simple. You separate the motion system out into three distinct stages. You've got your y-axis, your x-axis, and your z-axis. So that's really simple to build, really simple to troubleshoot and program and maintain. Um, but it looks like what they're doing here is they're doing a Core XZ kinematic setup. It really looks like these belts are uh, situated perpendicular to the ground. I don't really like Core XZ because it's got the added complications of being a non-cartisan motion system, but you also have the added disadvantage of um, not having, I don't know, it just, it just makes more sense to do things like this. I guess it might be cheaper to do because you don't have to buy lead screws. Lead screws are somewhat expensive, and by getting rid of those, you can cut costs a little bit. Another advantage is you can move the Z-axis really fast, so I guess, you know, when you're doing your bed leveling, you can like boop, boop, boop move and do Z motion really fast. I mean, that's not useful in most 3D printing applications. You can see this stepper motor in the bottom is oriented 90 degrees from how it normally is on an Ender 3. If you look at on basically any Ender 3 or Ender 3 clone, you've got the stepper motor sitting like this with the output shaft pointing up. However, on this one, it looks like the output shaft is pointing forwards and the stepper motor is kind of like laid down on its side like this. 
and that would make sense for a Core XZ setup. So you've got one motor here on the bottom right and probably another motor over there on the bottom left. Also you can see it's got the same great touch screen that they use on the K1 lineup. So this touch screen is really bright, responsive, and easy to use. And I think it's one of the things that really sets the Creality machines apart from the lower entry level Bamboo Lab machines. Because these Bamboo Lab machines have like frankly a cursed little display here. Oh yeah, that's one thing I didn't talk about on the Bamboo Lab product announcement. I think they're going to either use a cheap display like this or maybe even go displayless. So they're either going to use a display like this off of the P1P slash P1S or they're going to be going full crazy mode like what we've seen from AnchorMake in the AnchorMake M5C which I reviewed where they completely take the display off of the machine. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Bamboo Lab has a pretty full featured app so you know your phone interface and the slicer interface is pretty good. So in theory, you shouldn't need a little screen like this. However, that means you're going to be really dependent on getting that app or getting that slicer on your computer. So uh, yeah, you're basically getting funneled into that ecosystem so that they can get you in there and sell you more printers and more filament and all sorts of stuff and collect all your data. And as far as the rest of this Ender 3 V3 goes, I think it's pretty much going to be a Creality K1 just converted into a bed slinger to get all those advantages of bed slingers. That lower cost of production, the cheaper cost of shipping, um, just, you know, there's a lot of advantages there and I think that's what we're going to see from this Ender 3 V3. Now, the big question is, are they going to be coming out with a multicolor system to compete with Bamboo Lab? And the answer to that question is, I think no. I think uh, Creality has really kind of gotten behind in terms of multicolor printing and they're not going to be offering it on this printer. Now in terms of price point, where do I think this Ender 3 V3 is going to fall? Well, we've got our Ender 3 V3 SE, which is $199. We've got this Creality K1, which has an MSRP of $600. So I think this is going to be somewhere right in the middle. So probably $400 to have a really high speed bed slinger that can print faster than pretty much any bed slinger that we've seen before. But, uh, you know, coming in at a lower price point. I think most people print with PLA and PETG, so being unenclosed, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And if you need that enclosure, then of course you can always step up to the K1 or the P1S. Now, what do I think Bamboo Lab is going to do in response to this printer? Well, I think they might be able to drop the price of this P1P even a little bit more to compete with this guy. And of course, they're going to be coming out with their own new printer, the uh, Bamboo Lab A1, which is going to be a multicolor bed slinger that's very affordable. It's going to be for everyone who wants to buy a Bamboo Lab product at least. So I'm excited to see what's coming out next. So what do you think of this Creality Ender 3 V3 announcement? Are you excited for it or are you more excited to see what Bamboo Lab comes out with, with their Bamboo Lab A1? Now since I'm on Bamboo Lab's shit list, I'm probably not going to be getting a Bamboo Lab A1. In fact, um, I'm sure of it and I know a lot of other reviewers have already received theirs and they've been checking them out but no Bamboo Lab A1 for me. So we'll have to wait and see what they have to say about that printer. I might be getting one of these Ender 3 V3s since Creality seems to send me all of their latest products. So once I get that in for review, we'll take a good look at it. Are you more excited for the Ender 3 V3 or the Bamboo Lab A1? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you agree with my assessment about these machines. Do you think they're both gonna be high-speed bed slingers aiming for the cheaper end of the market or do you think they're gonna be something else? You think this is going to be a Core XZ printer? I really think it is, but you know, until we get one in our hands, we won't have confirmation there. While we're talking about it, we might as well go over this CR10SE. I mean, it seems like a pretty underwhelming printer. It looks like basically an Ender 3 S1 Pro, but with linear rails instead of V-Groove wheels, which I guess is a pretty nice upgrade, but you know, a little underwhelming with what we're seeing on the market today. It also looks like it's using some kind of Sprite hot end up here, a direct drive unit. Uh, we've got a single cable going out here. I can't really tell if this is going to be a CAN bus tool head, but it wouldn't surprise me if they used one of those 24 pin cables again on this machine. Let's just look at the pricing on this CR10 SE. All right, let's see what we can see about this CR10 SE. Well, it looks like it's got a pretty complex uh, breakout board up here. It might be a CAN bus breakout board. 
It looks like it's using the tried and true Sprite hot end. And uh, I'm trying to see here if they decided to flip the Sprite extruder around, like I kind of joked about in one of my previous episodes. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below of what you think about my theory about the Sprite hot end being backwards. On most Sprite extruders, the, uh, the lever is over here um, on, on your left side, you know, on, on pointing out this way, but it looks like on this CR10SE, the lever's coming out on the other side, so I wonder if they flipped this whole thing around. And uh, maybe I was right about that all along. Oh yeah, I think that's what they're doing. And the stepper motor, instead of hanging off the front here, it's actually situated above the, uh, the x-axis gantry. So that'll make things a lot tighter and more compact and probably allow higher print speeds. It's a much better design. I wonder who gave them that idea. And it looks like they're using a CR touch still and a strain sensor to do automatic Z offset. So really similar to what we've seen on this Ender 3 V3 SE, that automatic Z offset is just making things a lot simpler. Well, I personally think that it's hilarious that they finally switched the uh, Sprite hot end so that it's pointing the right side forward. I think uh, that's, I was not expecting that, but I'm honored that they've taken my suggestion to heart. It looks like this thing's going to have built-in Clipper as well, or Creality OS, which is basically Clipper. You know, we'll see how that goes. It's got a built-in light bar. It's going to be a decent machine. It looks like you can order it now for $460, but I don't think that's going to be super competitive when we start seeing these other printers coming out. Yeah, it looks like the build volume is 220 by 220, so it's going to be the same size as one of these Ender 3 V3 SEs, but it's going to have some more advanced features like higher printing speeds, higher accelerations, um, a better user interface that's probably going to be more similar to what we have on the K1. And it's also coming with an all-metal hot end. So on your Ender 3 V3 SE, that's something that you'd have to upgrade if you want to use higher temperature filaments. But it comes stock on this CR10 SE. You know, do I think it's the most compelling product? Not necessarily, but it looks like it's kind of geared for print farm use. Uh, with Creality's new slicer and their print farm management system, you're able to manage a bunch of different printers off of one computer. So if you're looking to get a lot of printers running, then I think this could be a pretty good printer for you. Well, we'll just have to wait and see how all of this pans out. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what this uh, Creality Ender 3 V3 is going to be, thanks to these uh, doctored images by Alan Mandic. Maybe Creality should actually cover up those details in Photoshop with like a pure black paintbrush just so that you can't boost the brightness and find all the Easter eggs there. This is going to be an exciting time for new 3D printers. I think everybody's just throwing 3D printers out the window right now, figuratively, not literally, but you know, they're just throwing them out the door as fast as possible because new product launches sell printers and these 3D printer companies are just trying to get out as many products as possible to flood the market, flood the media, and all that kind of stuff with their printer to get the most attention drawn to it. I think that's been part of Creality's business model with releasing all these different printers is that there's a lot of media produced about all these new printers because there's so many different models to compare between and you can kind of get lost in just looking at Creality products. But really there's some great products from other brands like this Elegoo Neptune 3 or 4 and this uh, uh, Bamboo Lab Machines. Well, uh, we'll see how all this turns out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.